Trigger warning, spoiler alert, betting down the hatches, podcasting from the Upper West Side of New York City. You are listening to the 151st episode of The Tom Kelly Show. Uh, that darned Louie Anderson sure ruined uh, the 150th episode. Uh, I was going to do a big anniversary show, and uh, I actually was asking you guys, uh, both on the podcast, on the YouTube channel, and uh, on social media, uh, what have you learned from the Tom Kelly show? And, and, you know, because, again, this, and if you notice, I just changed one of the tag phrases about the show. I, I haven't put it in writing yet, uh, but instead of saying self-help comedy, which sounds like I need help, uh, self-improvement and fun sounds better, but it has so many more letters. Like, so it's, I don't know how it's going to look on the graphic, but self-improvement and fun sounds a little less like I'm a damsel in distress. And God bless, uh, I always identified with the princesses more than the Prince Charmings. And uh, here you are, the Tom Kelly Show. A lot to unpack in that last sentence, by the way, but let's not do that now. So 151 episodes. It, and somebody wrote me a note, Tom, how could you have done 150 episodes of a podcast and I have not listened to any of them? And the answer is uh, because I have been doing a lot of them fast. And, you know, there's a lot to learn from making your mistakes quickly and at full speed. Uh, and in fact, that's part of why I'm starting to experiment uh, with a YouTube component for the show, because it's time to fail differently. Uh, let's face it, even if I increase the number of listeners to this podcast by a factor of 100, I don't think anybody in podcasting is really making that much money. And yeah, what would, what's 100 times 100? Uh, that would be what, 10,000 listeners? Somebody check my math. Alexa, what's a hundred times a hundred? So yeah, ten thousand. Whoop the friggin' do! Uh, by the way, I'm sorry to all the people whose Alexas I just set off. Alexa, stop! There, that was for you guys. That was for anybody who I almost set off a second time. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're doing this as a form of practice, and we're doing this as a form of spiritual growth. Uh, one of my listeners, I'm not going to say whom, uh, wrote me a very nice note saying, "Tom." I've been listening to your podcast on Sundays instead of going to church. Now, I really don't want to get into a ratings war with Jesus, but thank you for the support. So this will be a mini anniversary show of sorts, a solo anniversary show, kind of like how I spent some of my birthdays in the last couple of years by myself alone in my apartment. But I, I was just scrolling through the last year worth of episodes, realized 12 months ago, I was only doing one episode a week. And my friend Jeanette Barber um, said, Tom, you should start doing three to five a week for a while to see if you get better at this. And I think that helped. And honestly, in an age right now, in a time in my career where I'm not getting the stage time I deserve, you know, it's doing this every day has at least kept the part of my brain where I can just practice talking to people and, and vamping and stretching it out, uh, it's kept that uh, muscle going. And uh, for those of you who were asking, I just came back from doing the Colbert show today, doing warm up there on Monday night, January 24th as the substitute there. And it felt good, you know, uh, and I credit doing this podcast, uh, not to all of it, but to a little part of it, being able to talk to people, being able to talk to myself, uh, being able to have the confidence of saying, I can do this. And it's funny, part of me thinks I should start doing the podcast five times a week, but for only 20 minute episodes. And when you get into the balls it takes to do a podcast, if I don't have the balls to record a 20 minute audio clip five days a week, 
Why would anybody give me a TV show? You know, if you don't have the balls to do it for yourself or the gumption, the, the chutzpah, the, the, uh, the self-confidence to do something for yourself, why would anybody else pay you to do it? You know, so, and it's just, uh, it's funny. I'm looking through, you know, some of these podcasts I've done, you know, episode 46 with Vic DiBattetto, a great story on persistence. Uh, episode 48 with uh, Ginger Z. Uh, that was just a darned home run. Uh, a lot of life lessons from her. Um, 51 with the prison break life coach about being a little more clear about what my perfect day would look like. Um, you know, I, I found my episodes in the 50s when I first started doing this five days a week or uh, more than one day a week. My, my trips to Maine last June uh, was useful. Um, the positive um, lessons about giving yourself permission to get away from the rat race and the real hard lesson at the end of that run when I uh, hit on a girl and it turned out she had a boyfriend. And I just felt shattered and recorded that podcast early in the morning. So you know, you get into what are the life lessons I've learned from this podcast. And I'm still growing. I don't have any answers for you. I, re I really thought over the weekend I was going to have like a, uh, a lesson from each darn person. And I've gotten so many nice notes from so many of you. Uh, I, I mean, you know what? I'm going to share it. You know what? Screw it. If you're in, if you, Brian Kist, I hope this doesn't make you self conscious. Uh, what have I learned about Tom Kelly? Which wasn't really what I. Like, it's funny. I don't know if I'm the star of this podcast or the lessons I'm trying to teach, but Brian wrote a nice note. What have I learned about Tom Kelly? He is funny, talented, complex, and a sensitive man who struggles with letting go of past transgressions to prove himself and his others his value. Uh, but in actuality, he already won. That's BS. I didn't just learn this. I've always known it. Uh, you are sincere and genuine in an industry that doesn't reward such qualities. Uh, you're one of the rare good guys, and uh, you've definitely made my wife Tori's short list of friends she likes, which definitely says something. And, you know, it's funny. I read that in passing, Brian, and I'm only just really reading it now, and I'm realizing I uh, missed a phone call with you today as I was... Uh, uh, drinking coffee, uh, hobnobbing uh, at CBS. And uh, thank you for that note, man. You know what, God, um, uh, it's really going to make the second note I had written out from my friend Susanna. I really learned a lot about sleep in your interview with Diane Macedo seems so much less deep. But uh, there you go. And I know your wife loves me because, and I'll share this with the audience, uh, uh, when I was studying for my COVID test, which means isolating, hoping I don't get COVID. I got, I, I was the boy, I'm the boy in the bubble for the end of the week, people. Honestly, talking into this laptop and staring into the green light that is the web camera on my 15-inch uh, MacBook Pro laptop is really all the human interest, uh, all the human contact I'm getting for a while. But anyway, in the middle of me being uh, the genie in a bottle here, waiting to be uncorked, I got uh, a text message from Brian's wife, Tori, uh, and we basically spent an hour on video tech support. And uh, next time I visit Brian, there will be an upgrade of all the phone and computer equipment in the KIST household on Brian's tab, of course. So, but you get what I'm saying, people. 10 minutes into the show. Uh, you know, we're trying to grow, you know, and I think that's the experiment here is there's a lot of ways to be successful. There's a lot of ways to get your name out there. And kind of like James Altucher said, when we interviewed him this summer, when I was in Maine for the podcast, uh, this is one of the spokes in the wheel. So there you go. Uh, I, oh, I had a few smart things to tell you guys, though. Where's the one I had? Oh, I got it, if I can pull it up. So a few things, though, that we learn about failure. And I think Brian, Brian was a counselor to me in high school 
when I would become a crushaholic, uh, there was a, and you know, we won't name names on this one, but I would fixate on girls. And then I would fixate on being shot down by girls. And one of the things I've learned from successful people is uh, successful people seem to fail often and get up quicker. And that's something to learn. Um, and when we, I heard this on a Australian podcast that's sort of a business podcast. It used to be about creating podcasts. Now it's about launching brands. And it's called uh, Socialette. Whoever she was interviewing was one of those uh, manifestors, uh, somebody who's into manifesting your vision, which I, I don't know if I'm great at. I have a vision board, which one day I should show you guys. It's a, I used to have a big one, and right now it's a small one. But, and you know, they'll tell you about all these things you should do when you're manifesting your dreams. Uh, imagine what your walk to work would be like. Imagine what your, you know, uh, imagine what your paycheck would look like. Imagine what you would eat for breakfast at, uh, at your job every day. And there's a certain point where that imagining gets exhausting. And th this podcast guest, who is a woman, uh, said, uh, when you're done manifesting and you're, uh, or when you're done visioning and you're waiting to manifest, what do you do? And her line was, go dress up, shave your legs. Go shave your legs, which was her way of saying, go make yourself pretty like you're about to go on a date tonight. Go make yourself pretty like you're about to go out to the big job tonight. So here I am in a blazer, ring light on my face, expensive microphone over here, expensive guest microphone at the other end of the table that I've only used twice. I am a man here with shaved legs. So Tom Kelly's life story, real quick. Born in Brooklyn in the year 1976. And in 1985, as New York City was falling apart, my parents and actually also uh, uh, chunks of my cousins and chunks of my cousin's cousins Everybody left Brooklyn to go to Long Island. And then a lot of people went to Jersey and Staten Island and whatnot. But my family went to Massapequa, Long Island. And we moved to a nice little neighborhood that I would call, it was a neighborhood. That said, there were neighbors down the block and they were the best of them. Never a mean word out of them. They just moved to Connecticut. And Mr. Sabala's dad passed away. And I didn't know the man, but he was just one of those faces you, you saw a lot. And you waved to the guy whenever you saw him for 30 years. And, and without getting too crazy, um, Mrs. Sabala was very nice to my mom and very nice to me when my grandma went into a nursing home. Um, and I'm one of those guys, my father taught me, uh, my father likes to go to funerals. They say there's nothing more Irish than just going to funerals for people you barely knew. But it was a way of me honoring my own grandma and uh, uh, by honoring this grandpa I barely knew and whose grandkids, uh, as I suddenly realized at the funeral, I barely knew. Um, beautiful service, beautiful homily uh, by the grandson. But that's not why I'm rambling about this funeral. I'm rambling about the funeral because it was in a neighborhood on Long Island I've never gone to, Patchogue, uh, a church called St. Joseph the Worker, which I believe that's Jesus's dad, the carpenter. And I accidentally got to this funeral, which I figured was going to be full of people I did not know. I thought I was 15 minutes late, and it turned out I was an hour early, but I did not know that at this moment. Everybody in the church is socially distant, wearing a mask, and in a moment of what I would call intense prayer. There's nobody to make eye contact with to say, hey, when is the funeral starting? And I wave to the priest. And, the, and for those of you who don't know Catholic stuff, 
modern churches built after 1960 have little rooms that they call confessionals. There's either a nice living room part or you could sit behind a fence and do it the old fashioned way. And, and I've, the times I've gone to confession, uh, they give you the choice. I follow, I see the priest, a priest walks into the confessional. He waves me to follow him and I go into the room. I figure he's just didn't want me interrupting prayer or the funeral. What do you know? He's behind the confessional wall. I say, Hey father, I, I, this is kind of an accidental confession. Uh, and he's like, there are no accidents with God. He's like Polish or something. And I know that's not a Polish accent, but he's some sort of angry Eastern European. Next thing you know, so he's like, what do you want to confess? I'm like, I just want the time and a man. I'm like, isn't there a funeral about to start? He's like, yes, so we need to hurry. I'm like, you're not giving me an out, Padre. So I confess what I, an easy confession that I've talked about on this podcast, which is I have failed to forgive in my personal and dating relationships. And I just leave it at that. I'm like, okay, he'll, he'll, he'll give me a Hail Mary or two, get off the hook. Tell me about your life. You're married, you're dating. And I'm like, oh, you know, you know I'm, I'm a single in the city. He's like, well, are these relationships sexual? And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I don't want to tell the priest. I'm not getting laid. I mean, th that's the real truth is I'm not, I, I really, you know, aspiringly sexual, but I didn't want to say that. I don't want to give the whole guy my story. I just want to know what time the damn funeral starts. The man's now asking me to say two laps on the rosary beads in prayer for the right to life. So anti-abortion rights, because apparently they were marching in D.C. that day. And I'm like, I just wanted to know, Father, what time the funeral starts. And basically, by the end of that experience, I, I'm Jewish now. I have converted to Judaism. That is the ending to that story. You know, again, funeral mass, beautiful have breakfast with mom and dad. And then I'm going for a beautiful walk down at Robert Moses Beach. And I stop at a Dunkin Donuts. I needed a bottle of water. At this point, church, I'm dehydrated. Jesus has dehydrated me. I go to this Dunkin Donuts. I didn't even want my normal caffeine fix. I just wanted a bottle of water. And God bless the two women behind the counter who were from another country, presumably South American. They were overwhelmed by a seamless delivery order or whatever you call seamless Grubhub, whatever the app is. And neither of them are even acknowledging I'm alive. All I want to do is give them a dollar 85 and get the hell out. So I'm sitting there at the cash register and I zapped my bottle of water and put in the credit card. And basically I used their cash register to self-check out, even though it wasn't a self-check out. Now, I was going to walk, but I didn't have the confidence to walk and say, no, 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 don't worry, I paid. So in the end, I waited the extra eight to 10 minutes, and the woman looked and saw I did the work. So in the end, I just looked like a jerk. But I feel like at a certain point, I hate self-checkout, but I also hate bad service and being ignored, frankly, a vending machine could have done a better job. And except that I was next on line for about 15 minutes, I would have left and gone to a place with a vending machine. Here at the Tom Kelly Show, we're fighting the war on machines. But people, you have to be worthy of me taking your side in that war. So that's the story, people. That's the podcast for today. I hope you guys found this useful. Uh, thank you always for taking the journey. Magic Mirror time. Who's in the Magic Mirror today? Oh, oh, Jacob Lee Downey for commenting from multiple accounts on YouTube. I see you there. Uh, Charles Studevent. Thank you. And thank you for watching the episode where I said uh, COVID-19 cost me my career and I begged you guys to get a vaccine and you wrote me back saying you won't. Well, I'm glad we had that moment of engagement. I'm glad I reached you. I'm glad I tried. Uh, Jack Bird. Jack Bird shares this podcast every day. And my challenge to you guys is, if you like an episode, share it with a friend. 
tag somebody famous. I, 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 the problem is the last person I decided to tag. I was starting to tell you guys to start tagging Bob Saget. And well, we killed him. He was such a nice guy. I thought he would actually respond. Part of me wants to say, start tagging Howie Mandel whenever you like a Tom Kelly show. But I love Howie. He's been good to me and I don't want to kill him. So let's spare the archangel of death that is sharing the Tom Kelly show for just one more day as we evaluate our choices. And there you go, friends. Until tomorrow. Good night, New York.